Hi everybody, it's Tamara from Moogly, and I am here at the end of April 2022 with another live tutorial. Today we are making the Ripple Puff Cleaning Cloth, which is a free pattern you can find on mooglyblog.com. If you go to the link in the description, I'll have a link to the pattern as well as all of today's links. I've just gone live on Facebook with the latest Moogly news. Um, so definitely check out that link so you can get all the latest giveaways and patterns and all the other fun stuff going on. But today we really want to focus in on the Ripple Puff Cleaning Cloth. Uh, this is a free pattern I designed back in 2013. So way back then I wasn't really making videos like this. Um, live or pattern tutorials, really. So we got a lot of um, reader requests even recently for this one, and I thought it was a great opportunity to go ahead and make this one together. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring in my other camera here overhand so we can see what we're making. And then while we switch over, there we go. I also need to sort of refresh my YouTube page since we are live today. I want to make sure that I can follow along with you and make sure if you have any questions that I get those answered. So, okay, we've got it. All right. So this is a picture of what we're making today. This is the original Ripple Puff cleaning cloth. Um, I believe when I made these, I used uh, either Lily Sugar and Cream or Bernat Handicrafter. Um, your standard kitchen weight cotton is great for these. Um, if you've got some Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie, that's another great alternative. Or of course you can try any of the scrubbier yarns if you prefer. But we're gonna go ahead, let me switch out my pages here. Today, I'm going to be uh, using Lily Sugar and Cream. Not this particular one, but it's got a nice big bright label for us to see. Uh, this one is a four weight. You wanna use a worsted weight cotton for this pattern. You can see right here. Um, and 100% cotton. I prefer to use 100% cotton for my washcloths and dishcloths. Then I don't have to worry about, um, you know, touching a hot pan with them or you know hot dishes or anything but if you um, prefer some people prefer to make their washcloths and dishcloths out of like red heart super saver and make it a little scrubbier um, just remember not to use acrylic yarns around things that are that get very hot you know things fresh from the oven don't use it as a a trivet when you throw it out on the table make sure if it's cotton if you want to do that so I'll, today i will be using this pretty sort of aqua teal color but like I say, I really do love this pattern in um, striping yarn. Unfortunately, I don't have any cotton self-striping here at my house today. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this one. Now I'm going to start with a slip knot on my hook, just as I normally do. And hi, Chris and Thea. Thanks so much for tuning in. There we go. Now this pattern calls for a chain of 33. And what that is for the stitch multiple is any multiple of 8 plus 1. So we're going to do a slightly smaller one today. So we aren't here for, you know, the next hour making a washcloth. I want to respect everybody's lunch hour. But we're just going to go one, two, three, four. Oh, and I should mention this is a G four millimeter hook. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, so that's a multiple of 8, 8 times 2, plus 1. So you can make smaller cloths with this. You could do just 9, that's a multiple of 8 plus 1. Or you can keep making it wider if you want to make a really wide towel or a blanket out of this pattern. Really, whatever you want to make with this pattern. It would also make a really lovely blanket. I would definitely use a bigger hook, and maybe then I would switch to an acrylic yarn for the blanket. But it would be a really lovely, simple pattern. So to begin our first row, after we chain our multiple of 8 plus 1, in the original pattern it's 33, then we single crochet in the second chain from the hook. And I always prefer to work into the back hump of the chain rather than under the top two loops, but you can work into whatever portion of the chain you prefer. So I'm going to skip that chain closest to my hook, that one right there, and come to the next one, and insert my hook right under there. And just make a single crochet. Oops, there we are. So we've got our first single crochet made. Then we're going to single crochet in the next three chains. So we find that next one there. One. My fingers are having trouble thinking today. There we go. Two. And with this hook too, this is a smaller hook size than I normally use with this yarn. So you're going to get a stiffer fabric, but I, I like that in a dishcloth if you want something you know, looser, if you're not making it for a dishcloth or a washcloth, so you do want the fabric to have a little bit more drape, then you'll definitely want to go up in your hook size. This is intentionally a little bit stiff here. So we've got our single crochet in the second chain from the hook, 
and then a single crochet in the next three chains after that. So then what we do is we make a puff stitch in each of the next four chains. And I suspect this is where people probably get a little bit confused because writing out a puff stitch, there's just a lot of yarn overs and loops and it can get really confusing. So let's go ahead and do the puff stitches for this one together. Now, the other thing that makes puff stitches a little tricky is that every designer and indeed every pattern is going to use that term a little bit differently. Puff stitch is an idea, if you will, sort of like post stitches. It's a category of stitches, but the actual details can change. So anytime you're following a pattern with puff stitches, you want to go to the special stitch section and see exactly how that designer in that particular pattern is writing out their puff stitch. So for this one, we yarn over, insert our hook into the next stitch or the indicated stitch, you know, whatever you're making, yarn over and pull up a loop. And we want to go ahead and pull this loop up nice and high, just like that. So it's about the height of the other loops on our hook. Then we yarn over, insert our hook into that same stitch, so into that same chain, and yarn over and pull up a loop. And we'll pull these up nice and high, just like we did all the others. And you can see there are now five loops on our hook. Our original active loop, our yarn over, an insert and pull through, then another yarn over, and another insert and pull through. So we have five loops right now. Now what we want to do is yarn over and pull through just the first four loops that are on the hook. So just those first four. That leaves two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through those last two. And that's how we're making our puff stitches for this particular pattern. So now we need to make three more. We yarn over, go into the next stitch. There we go. Like I say, those are tight little stitches. Pull up that loop so it's the same height as the rest of the row. Yarn over, go back into that same stitch. Yarn over and pull up our loop. We've got five loops on our hook. So we yarn over and pull through the first four. You can see they're kind of separated, so it makes it a little easier. And then yarn over and pull through the last two. So when we go to work back into those stitches, it's that last yarn over and pull through two that creates the top of the stitch that's easiest for us to work under. So we've got two more. We yarn over, go to the next one, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull it up nice and high, yarn over again, go into the same stitch, Pull up a loop. Now, if we did it right, we should have five loops on the hook. We do. Our original, there's our new four. We yarn over and pull through those four. Sometimes it wants to get caught, and that's okay. Just take your time, get through all those loops there. Get down to those last two loops, yarn over, and pull through two. We've got three puff stitches made here. You can see how they're a lot bigger than our single crochets, but it's all going to even out as we continue. We've got one more puff stitch to make. Yarn over, go into the next stitch. Pull up our loop, pull it up nice and high, yarn over again, go back into that same stitch, yarn over and pull up our loop. We've got five loops on the hook, we yarn over and pull through the first four, then yarn over and pull through two. And as I say, this is not the way every puff stitch you encounter is going, is going to be made. It's not how I always use the puff stitch, but it is certainly a puff stitch variation. So thank you so much. Um, Camper 14 mentioned, I like mine loose so it dries quickly. Absolutely. However you like to do it, these stitches will look great. Just move your hook size up a couple. I would probably these days um, have made this with an H or an, even an I hook, but this was 2013 and this was the choice I made at the time. And it does make a really nice washcloth and it's not, it is Lily Sugar and Cream, so it's not too stiff. So then that is basically our repeat. Single crochet in four stitches, puff stitch in four stitches. That's what takes us on across. Find the next stitch and single crochet. And don't be afraid to go ahead and pull that loop down a little bit so it's a little tight. We don't want to really lose single crochet, but you'd also don't want to make it so tight you can't get back in there for the next stitch. So there's one. Working to the chains, always a little bit more effort. There we go, two. Maybe someday I'll figure out how to do puff stitches with foundation stitches. Wouldn't that be cool? I haven't actually tried. That's something to try something on the list for myself to experiment with. I've been having lots of fun experiment ideas lately. There we go. So now we've got four single crochets again. Somehow, did I end up with the wrong number? Did I count somewhere wrong somewhere? 
I may not have counted correctly when I was counting my stitches because somehow I came up one stitch short. We should have four stitches left for four puff stitches. I must have miscounted when I was counting my chains. I apologize. One, two, three, four. Oh, you know what it is? I made one too many single crochets at the beginning. That's what happened. I've got one, two, three, four, five made there. When you're talking crocheting at the same time, mistakes are made. So let's go ahead and pull that back. We're going to pull back. It happens to everybody all the time. And then I'm going ahead and doing this to show you everybody has to frog their work sometimes. We all make mistakes. There we go. All right. Now we've got our single crochet in the second chain from the hook. One, two, three. After that, four single crochets. Then we do four puff stitches. Real life, real life mistakes. <laughs> Yarn over. Let's do that puff stitch again. Go into the next stitch, pull up our loop. Yarn over, go into the same stitch, pull up our loop. Now we've got four loops there. Yarn over, pull through those four. There we go. And yarn over and pull through two. And sometimes you can see they want to get caught. Let me show you my little trick that helps with that here. I'm going to yarn over and pull up our loop for this one. Yarn over and pull up the next loop for this one. All right. And we've got our five loops on the hook here again. Now, when I yarn over and pull through these four, it's really easy if you do it this way for that hook to sort of get caught on these strands. What I like to do is put a lot of tension on the tops of those loops with my hook hand. So I'm pulling up on the hook to create tension there. And then I want to put point the hook portion of the hook down towards me or towards the base of the stitch. So I'm pulling up on those loops but pointing the hook down and that creates all that room for the hook to glide through so much easier. It takes a little second to pull it all up and put the tension on it, but it really does make finishing that pull through a lot easier. So let's do that again. We'll yarn over, go into that next stitch. Pull up our loop, get it nice and high. Yarn over again, go into the same stitch. Pull up our loop, get it nice and high there. And yarn over, you can see I'm putting the tension on the tops of those loops and pointing my hook down. So it glides right through, usually. Once in a while it still wants to get caught. There we go, and then we finish off that stitch. Now I always like to check my work, see, make sure I'm counting right. I've already got three of them done. See, I thought I had two more to go. I was going to go off on the wrong number again. So we yarn over and go to the next stitch, pull up our loop. Yarn over, go into the same stitch and pull up our loop. Make sure we've got our four loops there. We can yarn over and pull through those first four, and then yarn over and pull through the last two. There we are, and now we should be all set for our final repeat which is four single crochets followed by four puff stitches. So on the full sized um, washcloth, it's just three of these repeats across. On our little sample size here, I did two. So as I said, you can just add eight more stitches or eight more chains to your starting chain there. Just make sure it's a multiple of eight plus one, and you can really make this in any size, anywhere from nine chains on up to, well, sky's the limit. How much yarn do you have? So let's see. Now, did I make five again while I was chatting? I think I did. One, two, three, four. Yep, still one too many. I am determined to come up an inch, a stitch short on this first row. So we'll pull that one back out. Just pull right back up on that loop. I want to make sure anytime I pull my hook out of my loop, I want to make sure I put it back in the right way. So when I pull down on that yarn, it's the loop in front of my hook that moves back into the project. So I know that loop hasn't gotten twisted. So now we should have four chains left. Oh, and we do. Finally, so now we can make those puff stitches in those last four chains. So just as before, we yarn over, go into that next chain, pull up our loop, yarn over, same chain, pull up that loop, yarn over, pull through four, yarn over, and pull through two. Got three more to go. Hi, Carlene. Good morning. Three more here. Go into the next one. Pull up our loop, yarn over, pull up the loop. So take your time, pull those up nice and high and get that angled right there. And those, those two center loops really like to overlap. So if you need to check, you can pull them apart and then yarn over and pull through those four, yarn over, pull through two. Two more to go. And then we can get on to row two. And then we will have basically done our repeat. It really is a wonderfully simple pattern. Like I say, I think if anything, it was just the puff stitches that probably tripped people up a little bit. These are a little bit different than some of the post -stitch, puff stitches rather you may have seen before. We've got one more chain here left before our slip knot, so we want to do one more puff stitch. 
we yarn over, go into that very last chain, pull up our loop nice and high, yarn over, go into that same chain, pull up that loop. Now I finally need to pull up some more yarn from my ball of yarn here. There we go. And now we have enough yarn. <laughs> we can finish that last stitch. Yarn over and pull through four, yarn over and pull through two. There we are. All right. Good morning, everybody. So this is what the ripple puff cleaning cloth should look like. Let me get that centered there at the end of row one. Um, the full size one, of course, is eight, eight stitches longer, just that one third longer. So we can see it's really wavy right now. And you can see that a little bit in the picture here. Oh, we've got those waves, but we still end up square. So that's your little hint when we come back here for row two. And indeed, every row following are all going to be worked the same. We chain one and turn or turn and chain one, however you like to do it. Single crochet in the first four stitches. So that means we're working to the tops of those puff stitches now. Remember that last yarn over and pull through two? That creates a really nice opening there that kind of looks like its own little stitch right there at the top. So there's two, three, and four. So we single crochet into those puff stitches. Then when we get to the single crochets, we puff stitch into those. Yarn over, go into that next single crochet, pull up that loop, straighten out my yarn in my hand there. There we go. Do it again. Yarn over, go into that same stitch and pull up our loop. Yarn over, pull through four, and yarn over and pull through the last two. Got three more of those. So anytime from here on out, after you've got that first row established, your repeat is always single crochet four, puff stitch four. You single crochet in the puff stitch and puff stitch in the single crochets. And with that, you'll always know you're doing the right stitch in the right place as you work across. So it's just a matter of getting that first row all set up and then it will give you the clues that you need to take you through the rest of the pattern. So as I was talking about, when we saw that first row, you can see it's all bubbly like that by working you know, the opposite stitches in, in subsequent rows, that creates a really nice straight line. So you can have a really beautifully square uh, washcloth or dishcloth or nice rectangle or whatever it is that you are making. So I've got three puff stitches done there. I've got one more single crochet right there. So I know that's where that last puff stitch goes. Pull up that loop. There we are. And yes, Nicole Veers um, says she's going to use this stitch to make a blank, uh, baby blanket. And I think that would be lovely. It's got great squishy texture, but it's not open or lazy. So really ideal, I think, an ideal stitch pattern for what people use for blankets. Again, I would definitely go up a hook size. I would probably not use a G with a worsted weight yarn for a blanket. Um, I would switch up to an uh, probably an I hook, um, maybe even a J, but you'll want to try out. Uh, with your own tension and whatever yarn you're using. You might be using a three weight or a two weight or a bulky. Um, just play with your hook and yarn size to get the drape and look of the fabric that you like. So we've got our puff stitches into single crochets. When I come to those puff stitches, I single crochet into those. One, two, three. We've got one more left. There we are. Now we've got four single crochets there. They get puff stitches worked into them. So we yarn over and go right into each of those for a puff stitch. Yarn over and pull up that loop. Yarn over and pull through four. Yarn over and pull through two. So you can see it really is a great stitch pattern. Um, eight stitch repeat. We need four single crochets followed by four puff stitches. And then of course for your, for your foundation chain, you'll need to chain one more for your turning chain for that sing very first single crochet. But other than that, it really is a wonderfully simple pattern, easy to memorize, um, definitely one that you can make all sorts of projects out of. So now we're down to that very last stitch. It's a single crochet. We're in the right spot. We want to put our puff stitch in the very last stitch every row. There we are. Yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through one. And now you can see on our little swatch here, our two thirds size uh, dishcloth, how that is straightening out. We work single crochets into the puff stitches, puff stitches into the single crochets back and forth, and it really creates this beautiful straight fabric once you've worked more than one row. And of course, you want to work an even number of rows or odd number of rows. Um, 
whatever gets you a nice straight edge there at the end. Um, in the original pattern, we'll come back here to the Ripple Puff Cleaning Cloth pattern. We continue that repeat that I just showed you for rows two all the way through 21. Remember, when you turn, those puff stitches are going to be first. You're going to be all set up to do the exact same repeat for each one of those rows. So the only difference is for row 22 at the end, you do not turn because then we work a loop and edging all the way around. So basically 22 rows. You want an even number of rows. We've got two rows here. You can see how that gave us a nice straight edge. You want to work 22 rows and then you can add a loop and edging if you want to. Now the loop and edging for this one is a very, very simple thing. Um, whenever you've got, and if you're making your own, you don't have to stop obviously at 22 rows. You can keep going, make it as long as you like. When you're at the point that you'd like to stop, if you want to add a loop, all you need to do is chain 15, one, or however long you want. I chained 15, I find for me that's a good loop length um, for hanging things up, but your attention gauge, everything's different. If you want a longer loop, a shorter loop, totally fine. Chain however many you like, the actual number doesn't matter. For me, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I do tend to make these a little tighter because I know I'm not going to be working back into them. So they don't have to be, you know, big loose chains or anything either. I think that's about 15, close enough. Then to finish that off, we just slip stitch in the same stitch as the last row. So since we did not turn, that means we're not going to be coming from the top. We would have to turn to do that. So instead, we just want to come from the side. See right there's the top two loops. If we just go right under those and just wrap our yarn right along the side of our cloth. Let's see, and slip stitch right there. There we are. Now we've got a great little hanging loop and we can just continue to single crochet evenly all the way around the cloth. Um, how you do that is up to you. Um, if you like to split your stitches um, or work all the way around them, I would recommend trying your best to split these puffs. It's not going to be super easy, um, but a good rule of thumb I find is to work two single crochets in each double crochet and side of each double crochet row, excuse me, and one single crochet or stitch in the side of each single crochet row. So basically I would say, since they're gonna alternate along the side, you're gonna have puff stitch, single crochet, puff stitch, single crochet. That's still a pretty good rule of thumb. So when you get to a puff stitch, I would just do your best, kind of pick up two, two strands or so along the edge there and work one. And then this one's a little funky because it was the first one here at the top, but and then two. And then when you get to a single crochet row, you can just single crochet right in the side of that. And then when you're at a corner, like we are here, you can put an extra one there in the corner. Oops, there we go. And then just single crochet right along the base there. So right into the bottom of your foundation stitches. It's one of the reasons, um, if you've watched my videos, you've heard me say this a million times, I love working into that back hump because then when I do go to do an edging, I have two loops right there at the bottom to work into. It's a little easier to see if I turn all the way over there. You can see I've got two loops at the bottom there to work into just as if it was a regular stitch. And for whatever reason, I find that that tends to hold the um, border or edging a little closer to your project. Once in a while, I find um, if you work into that bottom edging and you've worked under the top two loops so that the edging is just that, that back hump loop, for whatever reason, there seems to be a little bit more of a gap between the edging and the uh, rest of the work. It just seems to leave a little bit more white space there. And I find this tends to add just a little bit more tightness and closeness and make it seem a little, a little, just, I don't know, I think it looks better, basically. At the end of the day, I think it just looks better. So thank you, Thea. Thanks for backing me up. I got, I'm so glad you guys like this. Like I say, it's a really simple, really simple pattern. You just single crochet all the way around the top. Come back to here. You can join with a slip stitch to that loop or however you like to finish it off. Um, when the original, I wanted a sturdier loop. So as I came back around, I did crochet around that loop. Basically, let me pull up a little bit more yarn here. Sorry, it's been a minute since I made the pattern, so I have to keep going back and looking and seeing what I did. But when I came back across that top row, when I got to that loop, you can make that loop a little sturdier, sturdier if you like, rather. I simply get some yarn in here. There we go. Crocheting right around the loop. So I would start at one end, of course. I'm just kind of trying to get my yarn hooked up over here for demo purposes. It wants to be all floppy on me. There we go. So you can just crochet right around that ring. So right into that chain space and make stitches right around it. 
But if you wanted, you know, if you didn't want a really, didn't need or want a really sturdy ring, or if you're doing some stash busting and you didn't quite have enough yarn to do this part, it's fine. Um, for me, I found that working 22, it looks like, single crochets around this chain 15 loop um, filled it up nicely. Again, the stitch count here does not matter in the least. It's just about getting the loop to look the way you like it. So what, however many stitches fills up your loop and makes it look the way you like, perfect. No need to stress on that at all. If you can see how crocheting into that ring, we're not splitting the stitches like we do when we work around the edge, but just going right into that ring creates it just a little bit stiffer. And like I say, you don't even really have to count those if you don't want to. Just make sure it's a nice solid ring. Then you can slip stitch or join to that first single crochet you made there along the side and you will be all set. So here is a close up of those stitches in the self striping yarn. Again, I wish I'd had a self striping on the shelf, but I didn't today. You can see it works out really beautifully and you can see just those single crochets worked in those puff stitches, how it really creates a really lovely Really lovely, lovely sort of undulating pattern. I think this would be great in variegated stripes, ombres. Um, Red Heart Super Saver Ombre would be really beautiful with this stitch pattern. Um, but of course, you can do really anything you want with it. You can make washcloths, all sorts of things. So I just want to make sure I didn't miss any of your questions. And Chris and Julia, yes, I love it. Absolutely. That back hump is so much nicer. Um, it really does give it um, a really beautiful edge, I think. It just, again, there's probably some physics explanation for it, but I did not take physics in high school. I stopped at chemistry, so it's, I just know what works. All right, so that is it for the Ripple Puff Cleaning Cloth. We'll go ahead and switch back to the other camera. Um, so thank you so much. Um, all right, there we go. <laughs> all right, a little bit of a delay. All right, so thank you guys so much. It has really been a joy spending some time with you today. Um, I hope you'll go to the link in the description. You get the free written pattern for the Ripple Puff Cleaning Cloth. Um, print it out if you need to, if you don't already have it memorized. Um, it is a lot of fun. And like I say, you can do it with all sorts of yarns and hooks and make blankets, um, you know, anything really that you want to, anything anything with straight sides. The only thing I didn't show you how to do is increase and decrease with it. So um, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a great May. Have a happy May day. Um, and I will be back live here again with another another live tutorial uh, in May. And I'll also, I will also be teaching several Michael's Community Classroom classes uh, over the month of May as well. So again, check the link in the description so you can sign up for all those free classes as well as any premium classes and make sure you don't miss any of the other lives or videos I'm doing. So thanks so much for watching and have a great day and I'll see you all soon. Bye everybody.